Hello and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. This video is going to go through tissue fluid, so what it is, how it's formed and how the water gets reabsorbed. So first of all, what is tissue fluid? So this is the liquid which surrounds the cells in your body and a group of cells performing the same function is a tissue. Now this fluid contains water, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, dissolved ions and minerals and oxygen and that liquid then surrounds your tissues and that means glucose can diffuse in, oxygen can diffuse in and so on. So this is how the cells of your body gain access to all of the essential molecules that are needed for survival, for example, for respiration. So where does this tissue fluid come from? So tissue fluid is formed because of the fact that capillaries are only one cell thick, so just one single layer of cells. And in between each of those cells, there are tiny, tiny gaps but the gaps are big enough that liquid, so for example, the water, can be forced out and so can very small molecules. So what happens is the capillaries are attached to arterioles, which are attached to arteries. Now, if you haven't seen the video yet on blood vessels, I'll link up here so you can see that first. But when the arterioles go to the capillaries, the pressure increases. And because you then have this high pressure of blood flowing into the capillaries, that causes ultrafiltration. And what that means is water and small molecules are forced out of those tiny gaps between the capillaries and it acts like a sieve. So small molecules are forced out, large molecules and some of the water remains behind. So that's how the water, oxygen, glucose and all of those small molecules that were being transported in the blood end up being forced out and bathing the tissues so they can then gain access to the essential molecules that they need. So it's all to do with that high hydrostatic pressure which causes ultrafiltration and that is at the arterial end of a capillary. So that's how tissue fluid is formed. But let's just have a summary of what is forced out. So we said water, dissolved minerals and salts, glucose, small proteins and individual amino acids, fatty acids and oxygen. So the molecules which are too large to be forced out of those tiny gaps are red blood cells, platelets and large proteins. So tissue fluid is not red in colour because there are no red blood cells. And this links to how that tissue fluid gets reabsorbed then. So that liquid, that, that tissue fluid that has been surrounding the tissues has to get reabsorbed because otherwise if you are constantly forcing liquid out and not reabsorbing it, eventually you're going to run out of liquid in your blood and your cells will become um, covered in so much liquid that you'll see swellings in your body. So the water has to be reabsorbed back into the capillary. And this happens at the venule end. And what that means is the end of the capillary bed or individual capillaries, which is nearest to the veins. And this time, because the large molecules remained in the blood, so the large proteins and red blood cells, and lots of water was forced out, the liquid that now remains inside of the capillaries has got a very negative water potential compared to the tissue fluid. So as a result, the water that is in the tissue fluid moves back into the capillaries by osmosis down that water potential gradient. There's no more liquid being forced out at this end because the hydrostatic pressure has dropped very, very low in the capillary now because so much liquid has been forced out. So at the venule end, we have a low pressure in the capillary and a very negative water potential. So no more liquid is being forced out, but water is reabsorbed back into the capillaries by osmosis. And within that water, there will be dissolved waste molecules that the cells are releasing. 
So as those cells are respiring, they'll be releasing carbon dioxide. They'll be um, producing urea as well. So molecules such as carbon dioxide and urea dissolve in that water. They are then reabsorbed with the water by osmosis back into the blood. And that's how the waste from the cells gets into the blood to then be removed from the body. Now, not all of the tissue fluid is reabsorbed by osmosis back into the capillary. And that's because eventually an equilibrium will be reached. And osmosis is the movement of water from a higher to a more negative water potential. So eventually, with all of that water moving back into the capillaries, you will reach equilibrium. So that means the rest of the liquid that is still surrounding the cells and the tissues has to be reabsorbed by a different route. And that's how the lymphatic system comes into it. So you don't need to know much about the lymphatic system. You just need to know that your lymphatic system has lymph vessels, which are very similar to veins because they have valves in, um, and they surround the blood vessels. So any liquid that doesn't get reabsorbed back into the capillaries by osmosis gets absorbed into the lymphatic system and we call it lymph. And eventually the lymphatic system will bring that liquid back into the blood where the lymph vessels are entering near the heart. So that's how that liquid eventually gets back into the blood. So that then goes through what tissue fluid is, why it's important, how it's formed and how it's reabsorbed. So hopefully you have found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to keep up to date.